Hey guys, it's Brian at Sign Me Up Designs, and today we're going to be talking about Polaris primary clutches. So a few of you guys who've been following the channels know that I picked up this 2008 Polaris Razor 800 a few months ago, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. We've done some work to it. We've kind of got it back to a pretty good state so far. Today I want to show you an issue that I've been fighting since I got this thing, and a couple of you guys might have the same issues as well. So this video in particular is going to focus on the primary clutches of the Polaris Razor 800, uh, and a lot of these clutches are the same when it comes to different models. Uh, this particular clutch that we're dealing with fits a 2008 to 2014, I believe. So here's where the primary clutch sits right here. This is the crank driven by the engine, and this is the secondary clutch, which is driven to the transmission. And obviously you have a CVT belt, which is what a lot of people have problems with over time. And that's what transmits the power to the wheels where you guys can do rip and burnouts and jumps and fun stuff like that. Okay, so I'm not gonna get too in depth with this, but if you guys want a complete breakdown of the primary clutches on these things, Hunterworks has a YouTube channel, and I'll link it, I'll put a link in the description to their YouTube channel. They go through these things in great, great detail. I, instead, I'm just gonna kinda give you a rundown on this thing, and the problem that I found that I couldn't even find an answer to on Hunterworks or really anywhere on the internet. Okay, so let's break this thing down real quick. This is the primary clutch. It consists of the spring, the weights here, and if you guys aren't familiar with what these things do, this actually is a centrifugal clutch, and whenever the, the engine starts spinning, that's where your dry belt sits, this plunger actually goes down and squeezes together like this, and it pinches the belt and makes the belt tension up, and then it transmits power to the secondary clutch, which also has two sheaths right here that actually open up as well. So here's the symptoms that I've been having with this machine since I've gotten it, and I've finally figured out what was going on with it. So the symptoms I've had is it's very hard to get into gear, and it starts to jerk a little bit whenever you finally do get it into gear. And the most important thing is I always hear a belt squeal after a little while, and I could never really figure out what was going on with this thing. Now, if you're like me, you've bought this thing secondhand, and you're trying to get into it for as cheap as you can. Now, what I will say is that all three of these clutches are eBay clutches. So all three of these are advertised to fit a Razor 800, but here's the issue that I've been running into. Obviously, I've hear, hearing some belt squeal, I couldn't really figure out what was going on with it, and when I bought this thing, this guy said that he replaced this primary clutch. Now, if you're like me, you don't really know a whole lot about them, you kind of just learn as you go. You just take his word for it, and it moves, so you think everything's fine. Now, here's the issue that you run into. There is a hot spot on this bearing that's supposed to be right here, that the belt rides on. So now this bearing is supposed to idle whenever you are not engaged and it's not supposed to spin the transmission. Now Hunterworks does a great job of explaining this and they actually offer a heavy duty bearing which I'm probably going to put into this clutch eventually. These particular clutches, this one and this one, this is the one that came with the machine that I replaced with this one, which is another just cheap one. I bought like a $90 one on eBay, okay? So as you can see, they are essentially the same clutch. This one actually has 47 gram weights, which is absolutely too light, and it was spiking the rev limiter whenever he took off. This one has a little bit heavier weights, 54 gram, which is a little bit better, and it still hit the rev limiter just a little bit. However, this one is a little bit different, and I'll show you right now where the difference lies. So if you watch the Hunterworks videos, he talks often a lot about the bearings in these things, and you're supposed to be able to spin this bearing in particular, but he never really goes into detail, at least from what I can find on his videos, of what the bearing is actually supposed to do and where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna show you that today. These two cheap eBay clutches do not have bearings. This piece right here is supposed to free spin just like this. If you grab it with your hands, you can roll this with your fingers, and that is what your belt is supposed to idle on whenever you're trying to put it into gear and you're in neutral, or if you're in gear and not even moving. The second eBay clutch is the same exact way as the first one. This bearing does not move. I can take this, and I thought at first maybe these bearings were locked up, but if you look even closer, this bearing is actually attached to this inner sheave which attaches to the engine. So there is no bearing. There's no bearing in here. And that's why you need to avoid these cheap eBay clutches. However, here's what I did do. I went on the internet and I went back on Amazon. Now, a lot of people don't have $600 to throw on a brand new clutch and Hunterworks does offer a new clutch for these, but it's like $1,200. It comes with a new belt and a new secondary and I'm sure it's very great quality. But if you're like me and you get into this thing for super cheap, I mean, I only paid $1,000 for this machine. I don't really want to put another 1200 back into the clutching system. I did some research on Amazon and I found this particular brand. These eBay clutches, they're unbranded, they have no stamps or anything on this. And this is a brand called Vivor, 
and there's your serial number right there. So right away we're doing a little bit better since it has a brand and you know a serial number on it. These are just generic trash in my opinion. Also, you've got a blue spring in there which is supposed to be the spring you come with that comes with it and there's different weights in here that actually have the right measurements. These are actually 64 gram weights which is what is used for these machines. Now here's the trick. This was advertised as a 2010 and up Polaris Razor 800 clutch. This particular clutch, the first one that I bought, was advertised to fit a 2008 to 2014. Now here's one other issue that I ran into that you guys might run into as well. This is a clutch puller that's supposed to be a clutch puller for a Polaris Razor 800. You can see where I kind of tried to modify this and shave it down and here's why. This clutch puller does not fit into these threads. Before I shaved this down, this wouldn't even go inside this bearing at all. It would hit right here and stop. So I tried to shave it down thinking that maybe they machined this thing wrong. So this is the new clutch that I just purchased and look at this. This thing goes in and threads in just like it's supposed to. So although these cheap ones were advertised to fit it, with the weighting and everything that's going on with these, I really feel like these are for like a Sportsman 400. I still don't know why they would make these things without a bearing. Okay, so we got the clutch back on here. Now this is what should happen. Whenever you go to turn this secondary, this thing should spin nice and free. There should be no resistance. And what it's doing is that belt is actually rolling on that bearing. This bearing spins. Now, in some of the HunterWorks videos and in some of the forums that you might read, they tell you to reach down in the primary bearing and you should be able to spin this bearing freely. But they never show you exactly how to do that. So I'm going to show you right now. So this bearing is the one that we were talking about right here. You should be able to take your finger and put it down inside there and very easily, with maybe just a little bit of resistance since the belt is on, turn this whole bearing. And obviously, whenever we're turning this, it's very, very easily turning. So if you crank this thing up with this cover off of the CVT and you see this primary moving and this secondary moving just as fast as that primary, you have that cheap, shitty eBay clutch in there. Get that thing out of there, get you one with a good bearing. So right now we're in neutral and we can actually take our hand and stop this clutch. Now don't do this if you're unsure of which one you have. But now when I put it into reverse, it's very easy and there's no grinding. So we're gonna click it back up into neutral here. And same thing, this belt is, is barely spinning and we can very easily stop this thing with our hand. Now again, do not try to stop this with your hand. If you are unsure of which clutch you have in here, you will hurt yourself. One more thing that a few people talk about is belt alignment. Right here is where they're talking about. There's two washers behind this secondary clutch that come from the factory. And I have both of my washers in there right now, but this belt's still riding a little bit on the inside of the sheath on the primary clutch. So what I'm probably gonna do is go find another washer that fits around there and I'm gonna space this thing out just a tad more. You want this belt to ride in the middle of this primary as best you can. Now, if you look at this one, you can see where it's kind of hugging the inside a little bit. I need to space my secondary out just a little bit more so that belt rides perfectly in the center. And that'll keep that thing from dragging a little bit where I had to stop it with my hand. If I space this secondary clutch out just a hair more with one more of those washers, we should be good to go. So that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. I hope y'all learned something about these clutch systems and these Polaris razors. Now this will apply for a lot of different Polaris vehicles as well, but this one in particular is going to cover this 800. So if you want to see any of the information on any of these motorcycles behind me, I have a complete build breakdown on every single one of them. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's free to do and it helps me out a ton. Go ahead and give this video a like if you found it helpful at all. And if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram. It's the underscore Brian Rogers, where you can get an inside scoop on what goes on before I post videos to YouTube. So thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.